I know you all have one burning question. How can I design my own photovoltaic system? Well, that's what we are going to discuss in the next few videos. A photovoltaic or PV system is a combination of components that enables us to harness the power of the sun in our own homes or businesses. At the end of this week, you will be able to make basic design decisions for your very own PV system. Let's start with what we mean with a PV system. Well, this includes all components required to convert the energy from the sun and be able to use it with our regular appliances. Typically, this consists of two main components, a PV module or several, and an inverter. Depending on the topology of the system, you might also require a battery. Let's look at a typical grid-connected PV system in action in the following three-dimensional illustration. On a normal day with the sun out, the PV modules on top of this rooftop are busy converting the incoming irradiance into photo-generated power. The grid-connected solar inverters used in the system are also constantly converting the DC output of the solar modules into usable AC power. The PV system is able to meet the low demand of the household. On a different day, if it's a very sunny day, the PV system is providing much higher power than what the load requires. Under such condition, the excess power is fed to the grid. In most countries, the consumer can offset his electric bills in this manner. This facility is called net metering. We can illustrate the same system topology in the following diagram. Here you can see a grid-connected PV system. The grid-connected topology is especially very common in countries that have supporting solar policy where excess power generated by the consumer can be fed back to the electricity grid. In a grid-connected system there are two main components, an array of PV modules and a grid-connected inverter. In this case the PV modules are responsible for the power generation. The PV generated power is not only able to meet the load requirements, but is also able to feed the excess power generated to the electricity grid when the supply exceeds the load demand. In this video, we will first take a closer look at the PV modules. In the following videos, we will discuss the inverter and battery storage. The modules are made from a collection of solar cells. Remember what we discussed in the previous videos about the basic characteristics of a PV cell and the various technologies that can be used in such a cell. Typical crystalline silicon PV modules are made from a number of crystalline silicon solar cells. These cells are then connected to form a PV module, which in turn is connected together with other modules to form a PV array. There are different ways in which the cells in a module can be arranged, which influence the characteristics of a module. Let's first take a look at series connections of the cells. Here, the open circuit voltage of each cell adds up whereas the current through the series of cells is constant, assuming steady state conditions. The second option is a parallel connection of the cells. Now the voltage across all the cells in parallel is constant, however the current produced by each cell now adds up. But how does that look on module level? Here you can see a module in which all the cells are connected in series. With the data of one cell we can now easily calculate the voltage of the entire module. This is equal to the voltage of each cell, which is 0.6 volt, multiplied by the number of cells, 36. This gives us a total open circuit voltage of 21.6 volts. What do you think should be the overall module short circuit current now? Exactly, 5 amperes, because the current remains constant in a series connection. 
Now, let's change the arrangement a bit in the module. There are now two rows of 18 cells in parallel. The voltage across the two rows should be equal. But how do we calculate that? Well, that's easy. We now only have to multiply the voltage of one cell, which is 0.6 volt, with the number of cells that are connected in series, which is 18. This gives us 10.8 volts for the open circuit voltage. As we have two rows in parallel, we have to multiply the short circuit current by 2 to get the module's short circuit current. If we do this well, we get 10 amperes for the module's short circuit current. The product of the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current are roughly equal to 108 watts in both modules. However, the specification of the module are different. This has to be taken into account when selecting the other components of the system such as the inverter or the battery. Let's take a closer look to how PV modules behave in a system. They respond differently depending on the weather conditions and their placement. PV modules perform best when irradiated with direct sunlight. Let's take a look at what is meant by the module tilt and orientation and how you can maximize PV module performance. What do we mean by orientation and tilt? Tilt is the degree of freedom that defines the elevation or the pitch of the solar module with respect to the horizontal. Orientation is the degree of freedom that defines the azimuth or the jaw of the module with respect to the position, which in this case is the geographic south. Note that different places and people have different practices of defining the azimuth. Uh, the most common references points are the geographic north and south. These changes of the orientation and tilt are very important for the amount of direct sunlight the module receives. And like mentioned before, the more direct sunlight the module receives, the more energy is converted into usable electricity. Other effects that play an important role are shading and the temperature effect on the module efficiency. They can have a significant effect on the performance of a PV system, but it's too much detail to discuss it here. So far, we have discussed the basics of a PV system and which role a PV module plays in that. In the next video, we will take a closer look at the inverter and its characteristics. Inverters and battery will be discussed in the next videos. You will also be provided with the basic guidelines of an overall system design. So, see you in the next videos.